Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, the association of love and muhabbat and that all that we do and all that we continue to do is to develop good character and ishq and love for Sayyidina Muhammad So everything, whatever we do in life, we ask ourselves before anyone has to tell you what you did was right or wrong, was that for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's the importance of taking notes. If you don't take notes, you're not learning this course. And by not learning this course, you keep failing this course. In every interaction and in every action that you do, especially if you come across these shaykhs of tariqah, Allah inspire us all to come across the tariqahs. If you're listening, listen to, will be listening to, have read the books, have read the articles, have watched videos of anything to do with Naqshbandiya, Mawlana Shaykh Nazim and all the representatives of Mawlana Shaykh means you were inspired into the schools of adab and that adab is the essence of tariqah. And the adab and their teaching is to open that essence and that reality to the presence of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So all the teachings are for us to understand and every interaction that Allah opens for us is then a way towards either failing or passing. And even in your failure if you are a person of tafakkur and contemplation Allah gives the opportunity to learn from our mistakes. It's not about how many times we succeed but how many times we get back up from what we've done wrong and how to improve. It's not that you come through the door and you're exactly perfect and you're going to say every perfect answer and every perfect reply. But Allah wants us to be a people of contemplation in which whatever I do I contemplate. Think before I send, before I say, before I post. Posting today is your most dangerous action you can do. If before a word, a gossip, a backbiting was to one person, you might go and say, oh what's this shaykh, what's this teaching? Now when people feel a, a need to explode satanic whispers from their head, they post that goes out to thousands in which you cannot take back and you're accountable for those people who read that. So it's not anymore you just say, I'm sorry, I made a ridiculous post, what's sorry? Tell the thousand people or five hundred people or twenty people who read that garbage you posted. So it means the, the immensity of the qaybah is again of an immense nature. Not I whispered to one person when I was angry and I said something, but you post and throw out picture, throw out images, throw out this and throw out that. And it's always a reminder for ourselves that tariqah comes to teach manners. If we didn't learn just the basics of manners, how are we expecting to achieve anything? and to, to enter into that presence. That's why the tariqah talks about adab, adab, adab yahu means that everything we do is the adab. So I ask myself, would Prophet be happy with me right now to, to do that? We say, say that but in actuality is that saying, is that texting, posting, what are you doing when you're about to do something? And if you're doing it from anger, you're doing it from from critiquing, you're doing it from whatever you're doing it. We ask ourselves, one is Allah happy, Mawlana Shaykh used to say, if you can't say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Raheem to the action, you're not supposed to be doing it. So with every action you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Raheem. If you can't say that when you're about to write something, do something, post something, you should not be doing it. And for Ahlul Muhabbat, you're asking yourself, my gosh how could I do that and think that Prophet would be happy. And this if we don't have as solid, later in life if the testing should become so severe, so outrageous is the lives of shaykhs and what they've been tested with that they have to have such a level of connection that they have to keep asking Prophet oh, I can't keep quiet from what I know. 
and Prophet will tell you, keep quiet. Keep quiet for my sake, keep your manners to be good. Doesn't matter what has been done to you, stay quiet if it's for me that you want. What kind of yaqeen is that and certainty that you, you've been oppressed through immense difficulty. If you don't have that training and that connection, how you can ever reach and pass through levels of adab? And then we see how, how the, the world is in such a difficult state. And then ask yourself, what does it matter? Uh, because right now all around you are satanic arrows aimed at you. Aimed, just firing off but they see a shield around certain insan, certain people. And that shield is their muhabbat and their love for the shaykhs which are the reflections of a Muhammadan light. That your nazar upon them, your support for them, your love for them, your participation with them provides you and entitles to you a protection, right? You say you love Madina, Madani, 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 okay. When Allah send you Madani, then you're supposed to be following. Ati Allah, Ati Rasulullah, Ulul Amri Minkum. When you follow them, you understood all their teachings, all the realities, they are reflections and flowers from that garden. If for any reason that garden and that flower hit you with a thorn, can you cut that flower? That's a, that's a Gula Muhammadi. I'm telling you from my own experience the level of thorns in that garden, you cannot. You can't imagine the types of testing that come in, in our lives. But this flower is not touchable and they're filled with thorns. The virtue of, of this rose is the fact that it has so many thorns while trying to approach it. So don't think approaching a shaykh and accompanying a shaykh and, and being in the khanaqah, the zawiyah, now that zawiyah is virtual. Don't think living in your living room you're on your own. As soon as you opened up this image that zawiyah now is a part of your home. Your home is a part of that zawiyah. You're part of this whole understanding and you're asking to enter into these gardens of roses. But these roses have many thorns and how we traverse the thorns will determine if we ever reach to the rose. In which we reach to the rose and it begins to give us the fragrance and the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad Means that if you caught the shaykh's heart and your actions through testing and through all the difficulties that put upon you in every aspect of your life, you pass them, you pass them, you pass them. What happens when you enter near now the presence of the rose? The fragrance because this world of ours of malakut is a world of light. And the reality of that world of light is sense. The angelic reality of entering into their presence we said before is the sense of smell. When they want to make a du'a the ishq and the love that they have in their heart when difficulty comes like a fire their du'a is just their sadness like a oil from their rose droops upon that coal and immediately goes into Allah's presence. And the angels take that fragrance to Allah And by virtue of the fragrance Allah knows the caliber of that du'a. Because that's one of the roses that been squeezed a lot, been perfected a lot, been put through many hardships, it has a quality of rose, a quality of fragrance and by the uniqueness of that scent is how quickly it's rising to Allah what it means to Allah and how quickly that rose its response will be given. 
Means then this is a way of, of qurb and qurban and, and, and dearness and nearness to Allah To be qurb and to be dear and loved by Allah means that they traversed the thorns, they went through every difficulty, they stayed upright. They kept their love, kept their love. They, they didn't get plucked and then hit the flower and then you would have destroyed your relationship with the rose. Now hit here can be your words, your actions, your character. Somebody emailed asking 20 questions, mostly big from the ego kind of questions. They sent a reply, welcome to Sufi meditation center and here are some links. And here's something about meditation, reply back in capital letters and you when you deal with the shaykh you don't even have to say anything, they feel the energy of what you were typing when you were typing it. What sarcasm you had, what anger you have, what your emotions were. They type something back, seriously? What do you think that sends now as a signal to the shaykh? That you're crazy. You didn't like the two emails they sent. Instead of being patient thinking, what's the wisdom of, of this shaykh sending these replies? It's not what you get as an answer from what you asked and what you want to hear, it's what you need to hear. That you're not asking from who your character is. Based on that reply you got another email talking about your anger and pride. So this must be sent for somebody else, I actually have absolutely no pride. That answer, I'll send you two more emails from that. But can you see the interaction? There's no names being mentioned here. This is the beauty of a, like a medical school, we're going to go through case by case. This, this illness is very apparent. Whatever energy you, you're using and don't say, I'm not going to email him because then you stay sick. But whatever you're doing and when Allah opens an opportunity in this virtual khanaga for you to interact with the shaykh because Allah wants you to reach something. If you're not being tested how are you going to reach anywhere? Soon as you make the zikr, soon as you have the association, as soon as you play it in your home and you're listening to his teaching, of course your home is now a testing facility. Everything in your home is a testing for you, every interaction now with the shaykh is a testing for you. And how you respond and how you interact, you should have very strong muhasaba and contemplate, what am I about to reply? Best I reply nothing other than, thank you very much because there must be a, a reason for that reply. However random it appears because it's not what you want to hear. This is not a nafsani school, I want to know the entire secret of the universe, please conduct a subject on this matter. Sami Nawatan, okay we're listening to you now, really? It's not going to happen like that. You reply whatever you want, you write whatever you want, you're going to get the reply that they want you to hear. This ship is on a course, what they discussed, they discussed. It was appropriate for that time, for that reality. From their teachings on this subject that we've taught, is there a way that we could go deeper into that? That's a maybe. But it's not about you know nafsani and you just throw out whatever you want and we'll talk about this and let's talk about that. But the main thing is that however you interact with them, it's not what you want to hear. It's what you need to hear, whatever comes back to you if you're sharp to find out now your disease. It's a very known process, it's exactly like med school. You go as a, and as a doctor you're wondering how this doctor knew the patient had this sickness uh, because you're trained all your life and that physical doctor he has no understanding of your internal. Physical medicine looks only for external signs and rarely they have an understanding of internal realities. But spiritual medicine 
they have an understanding of your internal signs and they see what's being exhibited on the outside. So it means then you'll be tested in this way. This test and this way is based on love and muhabbat. Anyone whom thinks they've entered into the love of Sayyidina Muhammad but instantly becomes angered by the shaykh and enters into disbelief. That they go from muhabbat and love of the shaykh to being munafiq and coming against the shaykh. And that nothing been done to you. Imagine those students whom they have been abused by their shaykh and they said nothing. Nothing been done to you, you move from love to hypocrisy. Then you multiply your hypocrisy by posting against the shaykh. Now you've showed the world your sickness. So it means this is a… it's not a unknown world we live, it's not a hocus pocus, it's a very exact science. They know what muhabbat is, everyone knows what love is. They know that when you're going to be tested and we even gave the examples of nafs al-lawama right above shawarma. <laughs> Lawama the devil plays with you, injects into you from his character, begin to inspire within you that you are a bigger knower than him. If you were the shaykh your character would be better than him. Let me have an opportunity to show myself so that I can go out and teach and show how I'm better than him. These are the known, these are all the shiuks published these levels of the nafs, they know that. So it means for them these are textbook medical understandings, spiritual sicknesses. As soon as the students exhibit this spiritual sickness then it's known that what's happening with them a shaitan has attached themselves to that individual. And their practices are not strong in which to repel the satanic force because they probably thought they were so good that they don't have to read the al khirat, that they don't have to do their salawats, they don't have to make their daily awrah. There's some dysfunction in what you're doing that a shaitan is able to attach himself to you. And as a result of attaching himself to you he is now beginning to teach you and to teach you against your shaykh. That's not from Sayyidina Muhammad We're taking a direct, direct understanding that if you've even been abused by the shaykh, your direct connection with Sayyidina Muhammad would tell you which has told us, keep the best of character and stay quiet. Just you stay quiet and be a good person, focus on your love. Look to the positive of what's been done to you and what good has been given to you, stay good, stay positive. When we know that for a hundred percent like we know our children, our hands and our existence that this is the reply from Sayyidina Muhammad then anyone who exhibits other than that is under satanic force. Where shaitan comes to you and begin to whisper every badness to you. Every type of anger to you, every type of ridicule this, ridicule… Because in the end what he wants you to ridicule is the Muhammadan haqqaiqs, the Muhammadan way. So that's why Prophet order will always be, be good, be patient, be quiet. So that no dishonour comes to this holy name and to this holy way. If we know that to be hundred percent true then of course when they're trained in their spiritual medicine they know when people exhibit bad characteristics. And that why are these bad characteristics coming out? They should be doing their awrah, they should be doing their salawats, they should be refraining from any type of use of drugs 
or inhalants or anything that coming into you that shaitan is riding through that contaminate your lungs and contaminate your heart. We've talked many times this whole of dunya right now is in a battle for the heart of Allah's creation. Because we said, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. Allah's kingdom is coming onto earth, its king and sultan is Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah described, not heavens and not earth can contain me but the heart of my believer. So whose heart wants the kingdom of Allah in it? Who's preparing their heart for Allah's kingdom? How that heart is going to be for the kingdom of Allah then our doctors know. The physiology of your breath, the breath that you breathe, air comes into your lungs. The quality of that air that come into your lung, come to all these little cells and capillaries, that produces the blood that goes where? Into your heart. That heart stamps the blood and now moves to all your organs. So then who's after your heart? Shaitan. What he's coming with? Everything that has to do with respiratory illness. You think it's a coincidence? He knows the kingdom of God is coming, he knows the time is up, he knows that the only way to affect this insan so that the kingdom of Allah doesn't open upon their heart, grab their breath, give every type of difficulty and sickness into their breath so that they can't breathe and then you see we entered into a phase of sudden death. Anyone asking about a vaccine? This virus is changing. If they think they have control over this virus, Allah changes it the next day and it'll be something completely different. And we don't know who's contaminating from where, there is no vaccine to stop what's coming. How many are you going to take when today is one, tomorrow's a different sickness? Say a mutated, now it has a cousin and the cousin looks a little bit different. <laughs> now you got to come again and come again and come again. All the running in the world won't defend us from Allah When it's time to go, it's time to go. But what we should be understanding is this war that's coming against insan. Shaitan is coming for the hearts of insan. If you're not good on your breath, not sitting and saying, I'm going to perfect my character, I'm going to connect to Rosa Sharif to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad in every action and every doing that I'm doing, am I going to be good with Prophet He's my intercessor. If I'm good with Sayyidina Muhammad then most definitely I should feel myself very good with Allah If I'm doing that practice and then I'm sitting and listening to the course of this shaykh, I should be doing my muhasaba, my muraqaba. And I sit and I breathe, Ya Rabbi the sickness they're coming after my heart. Grant me a light to come into my breath, let me to see myself at the Holy Kaaba, let me to see myself at Rosa Sharif in Medina to Munawwara. That I'm sitting in that presence, Ya Rabbi dress me from light in all directions but bring that light into my breath, bring that light and qudra into my chest and into my heart. Because that light and that breath when dressed by nafas al-rahmah from the Divinely Presence is a light that goes into the heart. That blood becomes pure and purified, enters into the heart and you're from the people of zikrullah. The heart stamps that blood with Allah and that now goes stamped with the zikr of Allah from the heavenly kingdom of Allah to the eleven organs of your body. So anybody want healing and shots and medicines and doctors, first make sure your breath is healed. You're doing your breathing practices, you're energizing your breath. For if your breath is contaminated and the bad character of your mouth and your breath is coming contaminated, you're doing drugs and contaminating, you're, you're talking bad and contaminated, everything going in is contaminated in that breath. You're sending a contaminated and negative energy into your heart. 
if that heart is with all this negativity what the zikr going to do upon it? It's just going to stamp it with a dirtiness and a blackness and as a result throughout your body goes a dark energy. And then there's no defense against these difficulties. We pray that Allah keep us with the Muhabbat al Nabi with the way of zikrullah, the way of salawat, all of it is immense secret. This is somebody posts, oh, what's the zikr going to help you in the last days? And zikr is everything, the salawats and nasheed is everything. It develops the love of Sayyidina Muhammad has the reality of sound that you're hearing the sound, that sound vibration is coming and penetrating your entire being so that you resonate at a much higher frequency and that you don't resonate at a low frequency which every devil enters into that being but you resonate at a much higher frequency by listening to the salawats. And as a result your frequency is able to shatter the lower frequency to keep it away. And all the breathing and practices to bring good energy and good light upon the soul. Then with all that light and all that nourishment then you take your ginger, your turmeric and all that's been prescribed, do your salawats, do your awrad and have then the best of character. And one complained that there's no need for madad, there's no need for this and then asked on behalf of the shaykhs, please help me. I thought you just said you didn't believe in madad. Do you truly not believe in madad? Do you think in time of difficulty who are you going to call upon? That who are, who are these souls around with what Allah has given to them of blessings and immense barakah and blessings and that their lives don't come to you with that love? That light of Prophet doesn't come to you with that ishq and muhabbat and you haven't experienced that immense rahmah all your life and then come back in the end and say, no I rely only on Allah and none of this is of any importance. You're crazy, you're being cut off from every, every type of rahmah. Those whom they cut themselves from only Allah, shaitan has convinced them to cut themselves from the rahmah of Allah when Allah describes, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكَ رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالِمِ We have, would not have sent you and all those who follow you inherit from you, inherit from your light, inherit from that rahmah and that mercy and that mercy fills the earth. And those who accompany them, support them, interact with them, all of them adhere and draw close to that reality. That's why we ask support. If that YouTube app is not working because YouTube and shaitan and, and Apple are now fighting. So when you go to support on the app it doesn't work if you have an Apple phone. Then watch YouTube through the browser because the browser will help so that these videos, thousand videos now blocked by Apple, the, fo the, the, the fallen one. <laughs> oh shaitan make everything difficult. Is non-stop. Now Apple and iPhone going to be fighting with Facebook. Now we don't know how that's going to interact with all of the things. But alhamdulillah whatever people do then you know there's always a way around different things. The support is of the essence. In a time when the centers are all closed down it's surviving by online. So when people support they're part of the whole process, the whole family, the whole barakah, the whole blessings. It's a lifeline that flows into your heart. When you contribute, support, buy and, and, and participate with their programs it's a lifeline that flows through your heart and through them that makes everything to be possible. And these are in the last days immense difficulties that keep this flow of energy flowing to everyone. We pray that Allah give us good character Ameen. and real love. It's one thing to claim you, you love something but then to exhibit every type of horrific character. But to truly love something with good character, love and muhabbat and every single action to be based on, would Sayyidina Muhammad be happy with what I'm about to do? And that governs our life and our good character inshaAllah. Subhan rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.